Hey guys, welcome back to War Room. We're going to continue today talking about different game types and sort of our rules, the way that Burn does it for uh, these games. So uh, let's jump right into it. We've already talked about a few things. If you haven't seen our video uh, regarding our rules, it's going to be right here. Go ahead and click on that first. That's going to explain our basic rule setup. And this is just going to be a really quick overview of how we do King of the Hill. Actually, let's point to another video really quick because this game type involves one thing uh, that you don't need to have, but I would highly, highly recommend it. That video is going to be here, and that is a video for our cube timers uh, that we use with this game. It's actually one of the first War Room videos uh, that Sean did, and uh, so go ahead and click on that if you don't know what the cube timers are, but they're basically just timers that uh, automatically will switch depending on what color. It's a cube with different colors on it. Whatever color is facing up, it'll start counting up. You can have it count down too. You can set the clock up different ways. That's just the way that we do it. And we time the game ourselves since there's a lot of times when we're, there's a hold or things like that. So, um, But you could play it counting down, counting up. Um, so we set up three timers. Uh, I like three because one is a little bit too crazy for the amount of people that we have. And two is even so it's really easy to just sort of both teams get very similar uh, times on each timer. So I, I, I like having an odd number of timers on the field. So three is about perfect. It forces teams to sort of split up, um, but yet it still rewards them for attacking and actually being aggressive and taking points. But you can still also, once you have them, play very defensively to keep them. Uh, that's what I like a lot about this game type. Basically, all we do is put these out on the field, um, you can do this without using those. There are cheaper versions that are pyramids uh, that I would highly, highly recommend. Either those or the cube timers. But if you want to use something like, like kitchen timers, that's how we started this game. And we just had uh, two at each point, one uh, different color for each team. And you would run up and stop one team's and start your team's. So it would start counting up, uh, um, you know, seconds, minutes, and eventually, you know, those, those are translated into points for who actually had the most time on the point and they captured it at the end of the game. So the goal is, like I said, to get as many minutes, as many seconds, as much time as possible on each point. So you run, you flip the timer, you get the points uh, at the end of the round, which is 15 minutes for us. You could play however long you want. Uh, we switch sides just to make sure that everybody had a fair shot since our, t our uh, uh, play area isn't perfectly equal. You might have some advantages or disadvantages. So, you know, we do two 15 minute rounds with a little bit of downtime in between so you can pick up darts and everything. Um, but that's really it as far as rules go. Uh, and like I said, hardware, there's the timers. You could use other timers. One of the big problems we had with that are people would sort of accidentally hit uh, reset on a timer and it would wipe everything out or they would start their timer and forget to stop the other teams so we wouldn't know how many points to give people. That's why I really like something like these cube timers that Sean found and they have worked amazingly. I can't say enough good things about them. I know they're a bit steep, but go check them out. Occasionally you can get them on sale. Um, and if not, check out the cube or the, um, the pyramid timers because uh, they're cheaper and most people probably aren't running more than four teams anyway. So it'll probably work well. The only reason I, we didn't end up getting those was because there is a stand that you have to put them in for them to work so that the flat surface of the pyramid is facing up, right? Because the pyramid point would be down. It's like a triangle. But if you had it up, that's just a pause because there's no side facing up. Anyway, if you look at them, you'll see how they work. Um, but you could use other things. If you have chess timers, you could use that. Uh, this is a great game type, guys. I really, really have been enjoying the heck out of it. Uh, for quite some time. Um, like I said, as far as rules, it's the standard burn rules. Uh, our respawn times will vary depending on how many people are playing, so it'll go anywhere from 15 to 30 usually with us. We usually pick one or the other, but you can do anything in between. It's up to you how many people you have. Your players, your play type, your field, all that is going to change, uh, you know, a little nuances of the game here and there. But that's just the basic general idea of how we play. Again, if there are any questions, let us know in the comments below if you've played uh, a King of the Hill. Let us know if you have different rules or there's something that maybe we didn't think of or you have advice for people. By all means, feel free to share it here. Let us know here on our Facebook. Email us, any of that stuff. So uh, as always, guys, that's it. Stay safe, have fun, and happy tagging.